Praise the Lord and God bless you. My name is Pastor D. Jerome Davis of Kingdom Christ Church. And we're located in the great city of Lillington, North Carolina. Amen. Where I pastor, I'm lead pastor. And of course, my wife, Pastor Sonia Davis, are leading a work down there in the little town of Lillington. Amen. We thank God for his mercy. We thank God for um, giving us a chance to serve him. And we want to serve him uh, with everything that is within us. Amen. With all our heart, soul, mind, strength, we want to do whatever it is that God wants us to do. We're here to say, God, whatever you want to do, Lord, let your will be done. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So, amen. Tonight is our Thursday night Bible training. And today we are speaking on the book of Revelation. And we are in chapter nine. Amen. Chapter nine. God bless you. Amen. I see a few people on there right there. God bless you. So glad that you popped in on uh, KCC tonight. Amen. Amen. Well, definitely. Amen. I want to um, get started. I'm already again late. Amen. Tonight. Amen. The enemy has been fighting. Hey, man, you couldn't even see me just in the, in the first live. Amen. But you know what? I'm still going to get the word out. Amen. 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 I want to let you know that we are starting a new sermon series called The Holy Spirit, a sermon series called The Holy Spirit. Uh, some people have questions about tongues and other things of that nature. And we are in that place where we're entering in a, in a place called Pentecost. Amen. 50 days after the resurrection of Jesus Christ, um, Jesus told them to wait in Jerusalem. But then there was a mighty outpouring of God's spirit. So we want to um, just talk about on different Sundays about the Holy Spirit. And one of course, the things that we want to talk about is tongues. And a few other things is the gifts of the Spirit. Hallelujah. Um, why is the Holy Spirit here for us? Why was it important for us, Jesus, to leave so that we could um, have the Holy Spirit? Amen. And so we will be talking about that on Sunday. Amen. Amen. So come on out to KCC and let's learn about Jesus and about the Word of God and about, of course, the Holy Ghost. Amen. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, God, I thank you for another night, another day, God, that you have kept us, Lord Jesus. I pray that in this uh, particular uh, setting, God, that your words would go forth and that, God, you would give us understanding of your word in the mighty name of Jesus. God, I can do nothing without you. I know with you all things are possible to those that believe and to those that call upon your name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We are the book of Revelation. Amen. And so last time, and I didn't speak on last week, of course, because we were having our Good Friday. Uh, but the last time we spoke, we were in the book of uh, Revelation chapter 8. And uh, we were talking about the seven trumpets. Amen. And when the first trumpet sound, amen. And I'm just going to go back because I want to make sure that I'm telling you the correct thing. Hallelujah. He said, when the first trumpet sound hallelujah there was hail and there was blood and of course there was fire and it was all cast down to the earth amen so we realize that in this setting we are in the tribulation this is after the church has been raptured up amen after Jesus comes back, amen, the Bible says, and you, I, I'm going to tell you what, there's a, a, a message that I preached on Easter Sunday about incorruptible. And I, I, if, if I can encourage you, listen to that sermon. Because we are, amen, dead, amen, when we die, we're just sleeping, we're sleeping, amen. Mm -hmm. Because we will rise again, hallelujah, amen. And But we will rise with a different body. A spiritual body there's a natural body and then there's what the spiritual body and in the sermon i was talking about the different types of flesh upon the earth amen you got a different flesh for fish different flesh for animals different flesh um the sun has its own thing with the fire the moon has its own um atmosphere amen stars are different they not every star is the same um and just like people, amen, I, I, I heard something today and it really blessed my soul. And what, what the guy was saying that you could take a blue cup, a red cup, a, a black cup and a white cup. And what you can do is put, put water into them, you put water in all four of them. And what do you see on the outside? You see a blue cup, a red cup, a white cup 
and a black cup. But in actuality, when you look inside, all of them contain the same thing, which is water. There's no real difference. Even your brain. Nobody knows what their brain looks like, though we can't see it. But our, we're housed in this body. This body is our house while we exist upon the earth. Amen. So we live in this earthly realm, but then also there is a realm that's celestial. It's the spiritual realm. And that's a realm that, of course, we know that God exists in. We know that angels exist in. We know that demons exist in. But yet we know that this realm exists. It's, it's evident by people who are demon possessed. Amen. Because these demons want to find a house to live in. And so they try to possess uh, people's house. Amen. But when we die, the Bible says that when Jesus comes back, the Bible says this. God bless you. I see a few people on here. God bless you. The Bible says that when the trump blows, then we shall be caught up to meet him in the air. Amen. But and our bodies shall be changed at a twinkling of an eye because our bodies that exist, do we exist in right now? Can I go into the realm where Jesus exists? The celestial realm. So it has to change is we have to have to, our bodies has to change in order for us to go into that realm. Amen. To be with Christ Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So the book of Revelation. So we see that the first trumpet, we, we see that hail, fire and blood. And this is in this period that we call the tribulation. That shall not be seen, nor we have we seen it. And this tribulation period is going to be a period that you don't want to be in. That thank God that the church is raptured up before this tribulation period. Amen. But when the first trumpet blew, amen, there was hell, fire, blood, and they were cast upon the earth. And the second angel sounded his. And the Bible says there's something like a great mountain that was burning with fire that came and it was cast into the sea. And when it was cast into the sea, the Bible says that a third part of the sea became blood. And we know this is in, if you look in the Old Testament, this is one of the signs or the miracles that Moses produced when he was trying to bring the uh, Israel out of e Egypt. But one of the trumpets, when it's blown, a third part of the sea will turn to blood. A third part of the creatures that were in the sea shall die. Meaning that the food that we eat right now, and I love me some fish, amen. But they will be destroyed as a result of this trumpet being blown. A part of the third part of the ship shall be destroyed when this trumpet is blown. And this is the second trumpet. Amen. The third angel sounded and the Bible says there was a star that fell from heaven and the name of the star was called Wormwood. Wormwood. And it says that a part of the a third part of the waters became Wormwood. In other words, it became bitter. So this is going to be what gives us life. You know, a third part of the sea is gone. A third part of the animals in the sea are gone. But now a third part of the waters shall be bitter. And because they're bitter, a lot of people shall die. And the fourth angel sounded. And when the fourth angel sounded, the Bible says that a third part of the sun was smitten. And a third part of the moon and a third part of the stars so that the earth became dark. So when this other fourth trumpet sounds, a third part of our day will be gone. It will be dark. And this is going to be one of the judgments from God upon the earth, upon those that have chosen not to accept Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Amen. These will be the, ju the judgments. Amen. And behold, he says, and behold, I heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven saying with a loud voice, whoa, whoa, whoa. So what we have, we have four trumpets. Amen. But now the angel cries out, whoa, whoa, whoa. And when you see that, whoa, 
then you need to take a, a, a you better pay attention because something is about to happen that we've never seen before. And God is giving us warning, especially when you say, whoa, hallelujah. When you see that word, whoa, in the Bible, pay attention. God is trying to say something to you. Amen. So he says, the angel came flying through the midst of heaven saying with a loud voice, whoa, whoa, whoa. To the inhabitants of the earth by reason of the other trumpets of the three angels which are about to sound. And see, I don't want, I don't believe that I'll be here, amen, when these trumpets sound. Then again, again, I don't know with the way the earth is gone, going right now. Will it be possible that we'll be here when these things take place? But this other woe starts in the book of Revelation chapter 9. And what it says in chapter 9 is, And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given the key of the bottomless pit. So when the other, the fifth trumpet sounded, he saw the, an angel or a star. And the star fell from heaven. Now we know this, that the angel was kicked out of heaven. Matter of fact, Jesus said, I saw Satan fall like, a, like, like lightning. Or I saw Satan fall from heaven. Hallelujah. The other thing that we can say about this is that Satan, which was the star, amen, gave the, was given the keys by Jesus. You know, who holds the key? We already know Jesus holds the key. Jesus said, behold, I have the keys to, to, to hell, death, and what? The grave. Jesus has been given what? The keys. So in the fourth sounding of the trumpet, the keys shall be given to who? Satan. The key shall be given to who? Satan to what? Unlock the bottomless pit. And another word that you can call the bottomless pit is something called the abyss. Because I don't know if you remember or not, but I remember that Jesus was casting out the demons and the demons said, send us not into the abyss. Don't send us there. But what he wanted them, what the demons wanted him to do was cast them into the pigs. Don't send us to this place. Because actuality in that place was a place that was reserved where God had locked up some bad angels. And the demons did not want to go to this place called the abyss or the bottomless pit. But yet on the fourth trumpet, when they blew that trumpet, all of a sudden a key was given to a star. To open up the bottomless pit. And he opened the bottomless pit and there arose a smoke out of the pit. So during this time of tribulation, when this key is given to this star or the star gives this key to unlock this bottomless pit, out of that bottomless pit going to be a smoke that rises. A smoke. And it's going to be a smoke of a great furnace. And the Bible says, and the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke of the pit. You know, we, we listen to this Bible every Sunday morning. We hear a preacher preach God's word to us out of this Bible. And now I'm in a book right now that what I am about to read will scare you. But yet we believe the word. I don't know about you, but I believe the word. Now, the thing is, if I can believe God's word, then I can believe what John was looking at in his vision when he seen what was happening when the key was given to Satan to unlock the bottomless pit, which we call the abyss. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth and upon them was given power. So out of this pit and out of the smoke came locusts. And you know, you and I know that locusts, what they do is they eat greenery. They like the grass, they like the leaves. That's what they do. They come in, they eat vegetation. That's what they do. But when the trumpet sounded and this pit was open, these locusts came out. And the Bible says that they were given power. 
So what God is going to do is he's going to allow them, he's going to give them the power when they are unleashed from this place called the bottomless pit. Now, we also know that in the book of Peter, the Bible says that the angels, there were some angels chained in darkness. Now, is this that place, the bottomless pit, where these angels were chained in darkness until the time? And I'm going to tell you something, that time is getting closer, and that time is getting closer, and that time is getting closer. And the question that I have for you today, are you ready? Are you ready for Jesus? He says, and they were given power as what? The scorpions of the earth that have power. So we know that a scorpion, a scorpion takes his tail and he stings you. And sometimes the stinger has poison in it, but a lot of times the majority of the people, they live. So these creatures that came up out of this bottomless pit was given power. As the scorpions have power and it was commanded them, they were commanded that they should not hurt the grass. So they was when they was when, when they was time to the, for them to come out of this bottomless pit, it wasn't about no grass. It wasn't about no leaves. It wasn't about the vegetation. They had a command from God. Can I say that? They had a command from the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And this command was that they were to hurt men. Only those men that did not have the seal of God in their foreheads. They were sent and commanded to hurt or torture or torment men that did not have what? The seal of God. And these men that didn't have the seal of God, you know what they had? They had the mark of the beast. They had the, this number called 666. And we don't know if it's going to be a chip in your hand, chip in your forehead. But if you don't have this 666, if you don't have this chip or this 666, let me say the number 666, then you cannot buy nor sell. And so in this time of tribulation, you are going to have an opportunity to take the mark of the beast. Or you're going to have an opportunity to say, you know what? I don't care what they do to me. I'm going to serve God during this time of tribulation. And you got to make up in your mind that for God, I live and for God, I'll die. Hallelujah. But when these scorpions or these people that or these demonic spirits were released from this bottomless pit, they were commanded to hurt, torment. But they were not permitted to, pe to torment people that had the seal of God in their foreheads. Hallelujah. Amen. And to them it was given them that they should not kill them. So, so they weren't so these people that they were uh, uh, assigned or commanded to go after, God told them, don't kill them. Don't kill them. But that they should be tormented five months. And their torment was the torment of a scorpion. So they were, were to be tormented five months by a sting, continued stinging. When he striketh the man, in verse 6 it says, And in those days shall men seek death. These people are going to want to die because of the torment that they're going to receive from these demonic forces or creatures that are going to ascend from this bottomless pit or the abyss. And what they're going to want to do is they're going to want to die. In those days, men shall seek death and they shall not find it and shall desire to die. And death shall flee from them. So they won't be able to die. They're going to be tormented by these things that's going to ascend from the what? From the fifth trumpet. That's what it is, the fifth. I hope I didn't say the fourth trumpet. From the fifth trumpet blast. This is what's going to be unleashed upon those that did not accept Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and Savior. Did not recognize Jesus as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared for battle. So these are going to be some funny looking creatures. They are supposed to be locusts, but yet 
they have shapes like unto horses. I mean, can you imagine that in your mind? They're supposed to be locusts, but yet their shape is like a big, huge horse. And they're ready for what? Battle. And on their heads were, as it were, crowns. So now they're going to have these gold crowns on their head. So they, they're locusts, but they have a body of like a horse. And then on their heads, they have these golden looking crowns on their heads. And their faces were like the, and their face going to look like a man, like you and I. That's how their face is going to look. They're going to have a crown on their head. Their body is going to be something what we look like a horse, but they're going to be called locusts. They're going to ascend from this bottomless pit. And they're going to have a scorpion tail that stings. And this is going to be the judgment of God being unleashed upon the earth during this period of tribulation. Their hair was like women. So now let's put another little thing on it. Get it in your mind. Hallelujah. Their body was like a horse. They were called locusts. They had a tail of a scorpion. They had gold crown on their head, and their face looked like a man. And then their hair was like a woman's hair. That looked like a, that don't look good to me. Hallelujah. Uh-uh. I don't know. I don't know what I would do if I was here. Because the thing is, when that judgment comes, that judgment is coming from God. And they ain't there to kill you. They ain't there to eat the grass and the vegetations. They are there to torment for five months. And only that, but their teeth were like lion's teeth. So their teeth was like lion, like sharp tools and ready to rip. And they had breastplates, as it were, breastplates of iron. So they had blessed pages of iron, probably some type of metal on their chest. And they had wings. So these things could fly from the bottom of this pit. They had to fly because they were coming up, ascending out of this abyss or what we call the, the bottom of this pit. It could have been hell. Because remember that Satan is going to be thrown into the bottom of this pit. And it's going to be locked. This is that place where we call hell. This is that place. These beasts that are ascending out of this bottomless pit. This is the judgment that the, that those that have not received Jesus are going to enter into. They had tails like scorpions and there's things in their tails and their power was to hurt men five months. And the Bible says this. They had a king over them. We don't believe it was Satan because we believe Satan was the fallen star. Satan was the star that was falling from heaven that was given the key to unlock the bottomless pit. So they believe that there is somebody that's within the bottomless pit when it is unleashed that is ruling down there in hell or the bottomless pit or the abyss. And therefore they that person will be the king. And they have two names for them, one in the Greek, one in the Hebrew. And the name of one in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon. His name is Abaddon. And in the Greek tongue, his name is Apollyon. Now, we, we, we know about Apollos and we know about other Greek gods. You know, some of these movies that we watch are, uh, you see about Greek gods and different gods um, that you know, are fighting against one another, especially in these like Thor, God of what? Thunder. And a lot of people don't realize that some of these people that they are contributing to be gods are only falling angels or demonic spirits. Some of these things that come on TV is, is, is real demonic. Amen. And, and the only thing that we could contribute it to is that somebody is, you know, it talks about in the Bible about um, the fallen angels. And I'm going to see if I can find it in Genesis 6. Genesis 6. Genesis chapter 6. Let's see if I can find it really quick. 
And it came to pass in verse one, it says, and it came to pass when men began to multiply upon the face of the earth and daughters were born unto men. I'm in the book of Genesis. It says that the sons of God, and, and when we call, when we talk about the sons of God, we're talking right here about angels. If you look in the book of Job, let me go into the book of Job because I want to I want to break this down a little bit. Let's go in the book of Job. The book of Job. The book of Job. Chap chapter one. In the book of Job, there was a man in the land of Uz, and his name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright. One that feared God. And there was born unto him seven sons, three daughters. His substance also was 7,000 sheep. And I'm going to jump down to verse 6. It says, now there was a day when the sons of God. Are you? I'm in Job chapter 1, verse 6. And it says, now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. So the sons of God, the angelic beings came, present themselves before the Lord. And guess who was right there with them? Satan. Who are they calling the sons of God? Angels. But as you go back to Genesis chapter 6, it says in verse 2, that women or daughters begin to be were born unto the children of men that the sons of god in verse 2 i'm in genesis chapter 6 verse 2 that the sons of god saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all that they chose in other words these angelic beings saw that these women look good hallelujah they're like mm -mm -mm. these women are fine now, some people don't believe that angels, you know, because Jesus did say that the angels are not given in marriage. And he said that, he said they're not given in marriage. But he also, if you look in the scripture, when Jesus was risen from the dead or risen from the grave, the Bible says there was an angel sitting on the side when the tomb was rolled and he looked like a man. The Bible also says that angels, sometimes you have entertained angels unaware even abraham uh, there was when he was you know back in the day if you look in the bible amen before they were about to go and destroy the sodom and gomorrah there was two angels but they were walking as mere men in this realm in the earth realm amen even to the point that when they got to sodom and gomorrah the men in sodom and gomorrah tried their best to have these men even though they weren't men, they were angelic beings sent by God to destroy Sodom and Gomorrah. So these angelic beings told um, what's his name? Lot to get his wife and to get his children and to get out because God had heard the cry of Sodom and Gomorrah and God was about to destroy it. And what he told him to do is when they got out was they better not look back. Because if they look back, they would turn or they would turn into a pillar of salt. And I don't know if you know it or not, but Lot's wife, she looked back and she turned into a pillar of salt. What I'm trying to do is say, tell you is that these angelic beings can come into this realm that we exist in and look just like us. And so in the book of Genesis, it says this. The sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair and they took them wives of all that they chose and the lord said this after they took the wives the lord said my spirit shall not always strive with man for man is also flesh amen we I, you know what to break it down for you i'm just gonna break it down for somebody right real quick right now you know a lot of people was wondering why god told them Israelites to go in and wipe out certain nations because God was trying to destroy that which was contaminated the race the God the thing that God created when God created Adam and Eve man became a living soul because God breathed breath into their bodies 
Now, when these angels became corrupt and looked upon these women and began to have children, they call them giants or the Nephilim. I don't want to get too deep on you. They go, they call them Nephilim. Hallelujah. And so what they did was they created these things that we call giants. David um, killed one of those giants, Goliath. Goliath had what? Four brothers. Amen. And you can see many different times when God told them to go into wherever they went into and he said destroy. Because there was still a race of people that existed that had contaminated blood or, or they had contaminated the race or the flesh. God even tried to reason why the flood came. Somebody wondering why the flood became because right after this thing, when God said he said he would not strive with men, then God destroys the whole earth with the flood. But the fact is, there were still some people, amen, that existed after. Amen? Amen. We know that God saved Noah, his wife, his children, amen, to represent what it is, the creation and to continue the, the, the you know, God's legacy. <laughs> amen. Amen. But even after that, there was still some race of people that needed to be destroyed off the earth. Amen. So back to Revelation. The angel that shall come up out of the abyss. The Hebrew tongue's name is Abaddon and his Greek tongue name is Apollyon. And it says, you know what? After he comes out, that's one woe that is gone. But there's another woe. There's another woe. And when you hear another woe, pay attention. When you hear another woe, pay attention. Woe one is past. Behold, there came two woes more after, hereafter. And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God. So now there's another trumpet. There's another trumpet being blown. This is the sixth angel. He's blowing his trumpet. You already got these little things that's looking like scorpions and you know, got scorpion tails, they got wings, you know, they're, they're tormenting people, they're, they're, they've been released from the bottomless pit, Jesus has given uh, the star the key to open up the bottomless pit, and that was the fifth trumpet, the sixth trumpet, he said he heard a voice, and we all know that the altar stood before God, or the altar was before God, amen. And it was the four horns of the golden altar, which was before God. And he sang to the sixth angel, which had the trumpet. He said, loose the four angels, which are bound in the great river Euphrates. Loose the four angels that are bound. Remember I told you that uh, God bound up. And I'm going to find it. Find it. And we go in Jude 1. Jude chapter 1, and there's only one chapter. So verse 6, it says this. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. I'm reading Jude. Hey, you got Jude? Jude verse 6. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains under darkness until the judgment of the great day. So he, he bound some people up. He, he, he bound some angels up and kept them reserved for the judgment. And now we see here in the book of Revelation, that was Jude. Now we're looking in the book of Revelation and the sixth angel there are four angels that are to be loosed, which were prepared for what? An hour and a day and a month and a year 
to slay a part, third part of men. So on the sixth trumpet, these four angels are loosed. Nobody knows who these angels are. We know that they're dark angels. We know why. Do you know why we know that they're dark angels? Because they were in chains. God put them in chains. He put them in the abyss. And so now on the sixth trumpet, these four angels are being let loose against humanity. People that don't have what? The seal of God. And the four angels which were loose, which were prepared for an hour, a day, a month, a year to slay the third part of men. And the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000 and thousand. And I heard the number of them. So in this revelation, in this vision, uh, John is hearing the numbers of this great demonic army. And, you know, some people could say, some people, you know, say that China has enough men or soldiers to be that army. Or they want to call it a natural army. And it very well could be some of the similitudes and some of the things that God has in his scripture. We really, God gives us revelation and he allows us to see things. But if you ever seen a demon, demons don't look good. They're spirits. Angels are what? Spirits. If you look in the Bible at different things that men of God saw in visions and dreams, like Ezekiel, he's seen, you know, an angel and it had six wings. One covered his eyes, one covered his feet, and one did, and, and the other the wings did fly. Uh, different men had different experience and they seen different things. And these things that we're going to see in this time of tribulation, it is frightening. Let me tell you, it's frightening if you don't have Jesus Christ as Lord. Because the fact is, if you give your life to Jesus, then you won't have to go through this period that we call the tribulation. The rapture, from the way we uh, look at this Bible, the rapture is going to come before that tribulation period. That's why God is giving everybody a chance to accept Jesus Christ, his perfect gift. If you accept his perfect gift, you're not going to be having to go through this tribulation. But the great thing about God's mercy and grace that if you do have to go through this tribulation, then you cannot take the mark of the beast. And if you can't take the mark of the beast, then you're going to go through some stuff because the Antichrist will be in power. And what he's going to do is he's going to bring assault against the kingdom of God or against people that will, you know, confess Jesus as Lord. And they're going to go through a whole lot in that tribulation period if they just would have accepted jesus christ before the tribulation period came they would not have to experience it but they did not and so therefore they're going to experience when these trumpets blast they're going to be in the midst of that tribulation period and the question is well they're going to have to endure they're going to have to endure yes some of them are not going to be be touched because remember the ones that were loose the um the the, the scorpions or the locusts that came from the bottomless pit, they couldn't touch the one that had the seal. So the people that are going through, the people that can't buy, the people that can't sell, the people that's running and hiding in caves and all that stuff, trying to live because they want to be with Jesus, the King of Kings, they're going to go through some stuff for that seven-year period because they chose not to accept Jesus Christ. And the fact is, those that didn't accept Jesus Christ and are not going to go through the tribulation period are the ones that will be judged. Because the Bible says this, it is appointed unto man once to die. And then you will stand before God's judgment seat. And the question is, will your name be written in the Lamb's book of life? Will your name be written? Will God say as when he opens the book? Will your name be written in? And he says, enter into the joy of the Lord. Well done, thy good and thy faithful servant. Or will he commit you to burning eternally in the hells and the depths of hell with Satan? Because really that bottomless pit and that abyss is for him. But what he does is he tricks people. You know, the Bible says this should be a great falling away in the last days should be a great falling away. It's not just the fact that people are not going to church. People are now turning, turning to doctrines of demons. People are now listening to different um, 
other religions. They're serving other gods. Are you understanding what I'm saying? You have a, you know, have a religion out there called the Hebrew Israelites. I'm not coming against, you know, I don't want to be that one to come against other people's religion. But I do know this, that some religions are not going according to the Bible. They don't teach it like the way God, and I have seen people that I have went to Bible school with, because I've been to Bible school, I went to Beulah Heights, uh, Beulah Heights University in Atlanta, Georgia. I went there, and I also went to Moody Bible College in Chicago, Illinois, and of course, I took some courses at Regent University, and of course, Assemblies of God trains you through their school. So have I been to school? Have I learned? Yes. And I have seen people that have went to my school have now no longer saying Jesus is Lord. They're now calling white people devils, the white man the devil, and they believe in something that God has never said. The God said this. This is what God said. And, and I know John 3, 16, for God so what? Love the world that he gave what? His only begotten son, that whosoever, it doesn't matter if you're white, black, green, yellow, Remember the, 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 the illustration about the red cup, the white cup, the black cup, and the green cup. And the only thing that you're going to take is a glass of water or a pitcher of water, and you're going to pour it into every cup. And you pour it in every cup on the outside, which is the housing or what's carrying the water. It's black, blue, green, yellow. But what's inside the cup is nothing but water in every single one of them. And, and inside your body, you are a spirit being. You are a soul. You're a soul, a mortal soul. You're going to live forever and ever and ever. The question is, where will you live? Will your eternity be with God? Or will your eternity be with? Or will your eternity be with it within a place called hell? Where the fire, Bible says, the fire never quenches. Where the worm does not die. Amen. That's not the place that I want to be. Hallelujah. What time is it? I don't want, okay, I got about, I would say I got about 10 minutes. So I just said a lot. Some people are gonna say, uh, I don't agree with you, Pastor Davis. I can only do nothing but preach God's word. It's up to you to receive it. Jesus said, I anointed you to preach the gospel to the poor. That's it, that's all he said. Heal the broken, heal the broken heart. Preach deliverance to the captives, the set them that are bound, set them free. You know, that's that's why the anointing is, 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 is upon us. He wants us to preach. He wants to declare what? The good news of Jesus Christ. And, and, and so everybody has an opportunity to be able to have life in that more abundantly. If they don't choose to receive Jesus, then their destination is this place that we call hell, where I don't want to be. It's, it's a place for Satan. It's not a place for you. And the only thing that you got to do is accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and as your Savior. Amen. Amen. So, and the number of the army of the horsemen were 200,000. And, and, and he said, I heard the number. And he's, of course, he's in a vision. And thus I saw horses in the vision. So in the vision, he says, I seen horses. And them that sat on them, they had breastplates of fire. So imagine that. Can you just imagine that right now? He says he sees horses in this vision and their blessed breastplate or their breast is fire. And the horses had heads uh, like lions. So these are horses. They got the horse. There's something about them horses. Amen. Amen. They got the horse body, but their head looks like a lion. Amen. And out of their mouths issue, issued fire, smoke, and brimstone. So they have the power to destroy you with their mouth with fire. This is the, the trumpet. This is the judgment of God upon the people that chose not to accept Jesus Christ. Now, some people would say, isn't God a God of love? I, I do believe that God loves us with all his heart, with all his soul, with all his, I mean, he wants us to love him with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. But I believe that he wouldn't have never gave his son if he didn't really love us. So the fact is, he's patient. He's waiting. He sends people like myself and other preachers to go and teach and tell people about 
God's kingdom, about the good news of Jesus Christ, so that they can have an opportunity to have eternal life, so they can have an opportunity to learn about the things of God, so they can live in peace, knowing that if they were to die, yet shall they live, knowing that if anything ever happened to them, they will be with the Lord. Amen? They will be with the Lord. And so what you want to do is you want to have that peace. Hallelujah. If you just look at the Bible, the Bible, there's so many prophetic words that come to pass. Even Jesus, it was prophesied about the King of Kings, the, the Messiah, the anointed one. And though some of them believe that he's just a prophet, he was, he was prophesied about. The reason why he can't be a prophet, though, is because there had to be someone to atone for our sins so that we could have life. Without the shedding of blood, there could be no remission of sins. And when Adam sinned, he brought sin upon the whole race. So there was nobody in the world that could atone for you and I's sins. The only person that was able to atone for anybody's sin was he had to be perfect. And so that's why God, who is, has the ability to choose Mary, and Gabriel comes to Mary and says, thou art highly favored. Because that thing that is born of thee shall be of what? The Holy Ghost. And that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about the Holy Spirit on Sunday. But that thing that shall be born of you, Mary, will be of what? The Holy Ghost, the Holy Spirit. Man didn't touch it. Man didn't put no seed in Mary. Jesus, whom came out of Mary, was not contaminated by man's blood. The blood that had to be shed had to be holy blood in order for us to be atoned for our sins. So, yes, he's not a prophet. He's God in the flesh. In the beginning was the word. The word was with God and the word was God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And the life signed in darkness. And the darkness comprehended it not. They didn't comprehend it. They didn't see it. They couldn't see it. That's the thing is that we pray. That the prayer should be that God would take the blinders, would help take the blinders off the eyes of those that hear the gospel and will not receive it. That have an opportunity to live life everlasting but will not receive the gospel of Jesus Christ. It's a free gift. The only thing you have to do is receive it. There is nothing that you can do to get in heaven. Everybody thinks, you know, some people got the religion to say, you know what, if I do this, I do that, and I do that, and I do this, and I do that, and I'm going to get into heaven, and therefore they feel like they can go and stand up before God and say, God, I did this, and I did that, and I did this. But the Bible clearly says your righteousness is as filthy rags. There's nothing you can do before God say, God, say, I accept you. Nothing. The only reason why you're able to go to God is because his grace. Because of a free gift, which was Jesus. Jesus got on the cross. He shed his blood for you and I. That you and I can have eternal life. He was the atonement. He was the perfect sacrifice. And the reason why it was a perfect sacrifice, because God allowed him to get up out of the grave. He conquered hell, death, and the grave. He has the keys to the grave. And these are the keys that he's going to give to the star that falls so the star can open up the bottomless pit and bring the judgment when the sixth angel sounds the trumpet. When the sixth angel sounds the trumpet. But clearly, Jesus has all power. But these angels, these four angels, are not going to be released until the sixth trumpet sounds. By these three was the third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouths, for their power is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails were like what? Serpents and had heads, and with them they do hurt. And with them they do hurt. So with the serpents, with their heads, this being, I'm going to call him a being. I know I heard another man call him. He said, these monsters, 
I'm going to tell you something I seen on Facebook the other day, and I'm, I'm going to get ready to get off here. You know how people give an artificial heart, and it bumps, 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 bumps. It basically pumps the blood through the, the body. And they made something else that was artificial, an organ. And they connected that, that artificial heart to the organ, and next thing you know, it started boom, boom. Boom. And the whole and the other part of that organ came, it looked like it came alive, but of course we know it's operating by batteries. And then he put leg, he put arms on it. I'm, I'm telling the truth. And then it began to move. Because the arms now, because of the artificial heart, is now causing the arms to move. I'm not saying that's what it's gonna be, but there's some stuff out here right now that we need to be watching. Hallelujah. Amen. AI. Rise of the Machines. <laughs> I mean, do you remember that back in the day? What was it called? Uh, what was that show called? Uh, Terminator. <laughs> Were these movies prophetic in nature? Did somebody have a vision, put it on paper, and then now they're putting it on a movie? You know, some of them things that we see in the movies, them horror shows and stuff, or these, these different witchcraft movies. It's not the demons giving them some type of vision of what it is really in this realm of the spirit. This this what they really look like. But we just can't see it because we're in the natural realm. I understand what I'm saying. But it's real. I have 52 minutes. And the rest of the men, this is what it says in 2020. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues they didn't repent. They seen what happened. They seen the bottomless pit opened and they seen these creatures, this tormenting men. They seen these four angels release and they begin to slay. They seen that, you know, a third part of the water was turned into blood and ships were, a third part of the ships were destroyed. They seen that now a third part of the day was dark. They seen it and they still would not repent that's what god is asking for repent and remember john the baptist when he came on the scene he said this repent for the kingdom of god is at hand in other words the kingdom of god was in a place that you can grab it but in order for you to grab it in order for you to enter into it or operate in this kingdom that is god's kingdom you had to first repent you had to repent from your ways you had to repent from the mindset that's why the Bible says, be ye transformed by what? The renewing of your mind. Casting down imagination and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. And that's what the demons do. And the devils try to do is try to get you off. You remember Satan was in heaven. He experienced heaven. But yet he still said, I want to be like God. I will be like God. I will be like the most high. I will exalt my stars above the, you know, the clouds. You know, he wanted to be. It was all about him. And that's what we got to realize, that it can't be about us. It's got to be about the Lord Jesus Christ. God, your will be done. Lord, I don't know what's going to happen, but God, your will be done. Lord, you're orchestrating it. God, you're, you've, you've already purposed it. God, you've already ordained it. God, whatever your will is, Lord, let it be done in the mighty name of Jesus. And the fact is, what I know about this is that nobody can stop God's will. Nobody can stop the plan of God. Nobody can stop God's purpose. If God ordained it, only person that can stop it is you. Because you refuse to believe. All things are possible to who? Those that what? Believe. You might not know and you cannot see how it's going to be done, but you got to know that this God that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that you ask or think according to the power that worketh on the inside. And I'm going to tell you something, that there's some power on the inside. He's the Holy Ghost. He's the Holy Spirit. And we're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit on Sunday. Not just this Sunday, but Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. We're going to talk about this Holy Ghost. They refuse to repent. And they said, he says, they repented not of the works of their hands. That they should not worship devils. That's what they were worshiping, devils, idols, setting up images as if it were God. You know, even the Antichrist, what he's going to do is he's going to defile the temple. Why? By setting up a, an idol in the temple for people to worship. And yet all these judgments come upon the earth and they still won't repent. 
and they serving other gods. Look at Hollywood. Man, I'm hearing so much about how people were blackballed. You couldn't be just you. You had to do what they said do. And if you didn't do what they said do, then they blackballed you. You had to do the uh, Illuminati, all that stuff that exists, demonic stuff. Because who is the God of this world, you guys? Anybody know who the God of this world is? Satan. It's written in the Bible. So sometimes when he when 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 Jesus when Jesus when he tempted Jesus in the wilderness 40 times, 40 years, he said, you know what, all this I'll give you if you will bow down and worship me. And Jesus said, you know what, thou shalt not worship me. Only only God you should worship. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, only him shalt thou worship. He wasn't going to bow down to Satan. And it wasn't going to take all this, all these riches for him to sell his soul. And people are selling their souls. This demonic imagery and videos and all these award shows and people are selling their shows for success. And now they're saying it on TikTok and they're saying it. I gave myself to the devil so that I can have the riches and the fame upon this earth. But I'm going to tell you something. This earth going to pass away. There's going to be a day when you will stand before God. And even though they've seen all these things going on from the box pit and even though all these judgments coming about, they still wouldn't stop, repent, change their mind, turn around and just turn to God. Because that's all God wants you to do. We're not perfect. You're not perfect. I'm not perfect. None of us are perfect. But the question is, do you love God? The question is, do you want to live for God? Do you honor God? Do you put all those other things that are not of God away? And turn fully to God and say, God, for you, come into my heart. I make you Lord, my life. Lord, yes, come into my heart, Jesus. I make you Lord of my life. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe you rose from the grave. I believe you are Lord. I repent of my sins. And so they didn't repent of what? Worshiping devils, idols of gold, idols of silver. Because he was trying to give you the riches. But will you gain the whole world only to lose your soul? Will you take all the riches in the world so that only your soul will be lost in eternity? Because remember, we own this earth for a moment. We like a vapor that appears for a moment, and then we what? Vanish. Every single one that's under the sound of my voice, possibly, unless Jesus comes back, is going to die. Well, the question is, when you die, will you have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Idols, gold and silver, and brass, stone, wood. And this is what he says in verse 20. He says, they can't see. Nor can they hear, nor can they walk. But these people set these things up as if they're God. I'm going to tell you something. God, we can't see him, but God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. He is a spirit. God is a spirit. But he doesn't live in these things that we worship. And the one thing that you can't have two masters. You either serve God or you serve your, your gold or you serve your, your riches or you serve your whatever. But God wants you to serve him. He wants you to repent from that and serve him. With your heart, soul, mind, put that other stuff away. Let's get Jesus. Let's get the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. Let's live for God. Hallelujah. Let's tell what we're supposed to do. Tell others about Jesus Christ. That's what he told the disciples to do. He said, go and tell them. Hallelujah. I got one minute. And 21 says, neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their theft. So I'm just going to just say it real quick. They didn't repent of what? Murders? Murdering? Tur murder? Murder is just annihilation. You're killing somebody, right? Murder? You can, you, can, you can assassinate somebody's character. Gossiping. Lying. They wouldn't repent of it. Sorceries. Of course, that's demonic witchcraft. and You're trying to put spells on people. You're conjuring up demons to try to get them to go after people or try to hurt people. Wickedness. You're associating with the, with the occult. They wouldn't repent of it. They wouldn't. Nor of their what? Fornication. Fornication, basically, fornicating means you're sleeping around. You ain't sleeping with God. You're sleeping with other, other gods. You ain't for God. You're about all these other gods. You're concerned about what people think about you, what they say about you, instead of you worrying about what God thinks and says about you. Man can't put you in a hell, but God can. And they didn't repent of their theft. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you for your mercy and your grace. Lord, I thank you that you are in control. Thank you for the book of Revelation, chapter 9. God, I pray that you prepare me for the next book, which is chapter 10. 
Father, give me understanding in what it is that you're saying, what it is that you're doing right now in the mighty name of Jesus. God, I cannot do anything without you, Lord. You are the King of Kings. You are the Lord of Lords. You are my God, my strength in whom I trust, Lord Jesus. And I pray that God, you would continually open doors that no man can shut, shut doors that no man can open in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you for you getting the glory out of my life. Thank you, Father, for you, Lord God, getting the glory out of my life. And God, where I'm weak, make me strong. Where I'm poor, Lord, make me rich. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I pray, God, for favor. I pray for favor in the mighty name of Jesus. Favor that only you can give, Lord Jesus. Touch the hearts of men. Touch the hearts of your people, Lord. Let them know, Lord, that we're doing this not for money, fashion, show, anything of that nature, but we're doing it all for the kingdom of God. And God, we promise to give you glory. We promise to give you the honor and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Listen, if you got something good out of this word, give. You can give on our website, which is www.kccministries.org. Or you can give through our cash app, which is Money KCC Ministries. Amen. Help us to continue to, to preach the gospel. Help us to continue to pay our bills at the church. Amen. So that we can stay open and we can continue to minister the word of God. Hallelujah. See, we believe that we should be in the house of God because the Bible says where two or three are gathered in his name, he's there. And the other reason why it says forsake not yourself assembling with the saints. So we believe there should be a house, a place where we can go and worship and honor our God. Amen. So come to the house of the Lord. Amen. And bless the house of the Lord. And God will give it back to you. Press down, shaking together, running over. That's what he said. He will cause men to give to your bosom as you give to God's kingdom so that we can continue to do what God has called us to do in this season, this hour, this day. Hallelujah. Thank you so much. I love you guys. You guys have a great night. I'll see you on Sunday morning.